Greetings, everyone. Father Jim here. Hope you're doing well on this Saturday, and it is the fourth day of May. I'm just going to be reading from our first reading today, and that's from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, beginning with verse 1. Paul reached also Derby and Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. The brothers in Lystra and Iconium spoke highly of him, and Paul wanted him to come along with him. On account of the Jews of that region, Paul had him circumcised, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from city to city, they handed on to the people for observance the decisions reached by the apostles and presbyters in Jerusalem. And day after day, the churches grew stronger in faith and increased in number. They traveled through Phrygian and Galatian territory, because they had been prevented by the Holy Spirit from preaching the message in the province of Asia. When they came to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So they crossed through Mysia and came down to Troas. And during the night, Paul had a vision. A Macedonian stood before him and implored him with these words, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we sought passage to Macedonia at once, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. Well, there's an old saying that goes like this, when you're up to your neck in alligators, it's hard to remember that your initial objective was to drain the swamp. The apostles and other early missionaries may have had similar feelings as they struggled with hostility and difficult circumstances, that they probably had to remind one another that their main objective was to help people get to heaven by following the teachings of Jesus. The details of accomplishing a goal can sometimes hijack the overall larger objective. We're reminded of some of the challenges the early church faced. They were being persecuted. They had to travel large distances. They were dealing with strangers who knew nothing about Jesus. And the list goes on and on. They were not teachers or organizers. Their leader had been crucified, and now they were largely uneducated people telling others what to believe about God, contradicting those who were supposed to be their religious leaders. It is quite a picture. But the Holy Spirit prevailed. The alligators did not keep the swamp from being drained, so to speak. The power of the mission was too strong to stop it from succeeding. Today, of course, there are new challenges that we face as a church and as people who work to spread that good news. There are new alligators and new swamps. And just like those early disciples, we know we are up to, our, up to the challenge because we have the Holy Spirit with us. Love is still the message. Jesus is still the one we follow. And through our combined faithfulness, the world has not heard the last of us. It's Saturday. Today we have lots of our young children are making their first communion, so let's keep them and their families in our prayers as well. As we continue to move through this beautiful month of May, the month of our Blessed Mother, so let's keep our hearts devoted to her as well. Pray the rosary. Well, enjoy your Enjoy the Saturday your day off, hopefully, and get some rest. But remember, get to church tomorrow as well. God bless you. Take care.